So I'm sure by now we've all heard that Facebook has released their has changed their app name to Meta. And yeah, some some people say that it's going to be the end of the world. Other people say that it's going to be somehow. But I, my personal opinion is I feel like this change and the new development to Facebook from what I've heard, it's not all that bad, bro. I mean, it has some. It's still, it's still the tech. No, some people are afraid of the advancement of technology. But I, what I see it as, I just see it as the world developing. And yeah. For us to adopt a new company brand to encompass everything that we do, to reflect who we are and what we hope to build. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Our mission remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. Our apps and their brands, they're not changing either. And we are still the company that designs technology around people. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse, starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. And it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I knew you were bluffing. <laughs> hey, wait. Where is Naomi? Let's yes, call her. Naomi. <laughs> hey, should we deal you in? Hey. Sorry, I'm running late, but you've got to see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around Soho hiding AR pieces for people to find. 3D street art? That's cool. Send that link over so we can all look at it. This is stunning. I think that is something. It's awesome. So this is basically your phone 3D version. This is actually it. Your phone in three-dimensional real life, meaning you are inside your phone. You know, the, I've, there are movies where you see people go inside their phone and get stuck in their phone. Like, you've seen movies, I've got to the movie where there were different applications and stuff, yeah. The movie is just the same thing, because now they just send them a link and they can see what is happening there. Privacy and safety need to be built into the metaverse from day one. You'll get to decide when you want to be with other people, when you want to block someone from appearing in your space, or when you want to take a break and teleport to a private bubble to be alone. You're going to be able to bring things from the physical world into the metaverse. Almost any type of media that can be represented digitally, photos, videos, art, music, movies, books, games, you name it. Lots of things that are physical today, like screens, will just be able to be holograms in the future. You won't need a physical TV. It'll just be a $1 hologram from some high school kid halfway across the world. And you'll be able to take your items and project them into the physical world as holograms in augmented reality, too. One part of this is Horizon Home which is our early vision for a home space in the metaverse. Horizon Home is the first thing that you'll see when you put on your Quest headset. Today, there are already a bunch of options to choose from, and in the future, anyone will be able to create one. We've just called it Home until now because it's been missing something very important, people. Soon, we're going to be introducing a social version of Home, 
where you can invite your friends to join you as avatars. You'll be able to hang out, watch videos together, and jump into apps together. Then there is Horizon Worlds, which is where you can build worlds and jump into them with people. Horizon is designed to make it possible Minecraft. Minecraft. Horizon Worlds. Minecraft. He made his world, created how the fire wants, and invited his friends to it. Minecraft. My guy just made an advanced Minecraft. For everyone to create. And we're already seeing people build some really interesting experiences, from creating new games together, to throwing surprise parties in VR that family and friends around the world can join. Over the last year and a half, a lot of us who work in offices have gone remote. And while I miss seeing the people I work with, I think remote work is here to stay for a lot of people. So we're going to need better tools to work together. Let's take a look at what working in the metaverse will be like. Imagine if you could be at the office without the commute. You would still have that sense of presence, shared physical space, those chance interactions that make your day all accessible from anywhere. Now imagine that you have your perfect work setup and you can actually do more than you could in your regular work setup. And on top of all that, you can keep wearing your favorite sweatpants. And, a and as we focused more on work, and frankly, as we've heard your feedback more broadly, we're working on making it so you can log into Quest with an account other than your personal Facebook account. We're starting to test support for work accounts soon, and we're working on making a broader shift here within the next year. I know this is a big deal for a lot of people, not everyone wants their social media profile linked to all these other experiences, and I get that, especially as the metaverse expands. And I'll share more about that later. But I'm genuinely optimistic about work in the metaverse. We know from the last... So wait, you want to create a work in the metaverse? All of us remember when Facebook and Instagram stopped working for about 5 hours. So if this metaverse just stops working, that means the entire and the society is based on this metaverse, what then happens? The old world runs into confusion. Or what the, what the what is his plan next? What is the next course of action then? Because yeah, technology is good and fine, but it's not flawless. Yeah, it has flaws. Some days it will be off. And yeah, then you know, basing the entire society on that is quite risky. It's a couple of years that a lot of people can effectively work from anywhere. But hybrid is gonna be a lot more complex when some people are together and others are still remote. So giving everyone the tools to be present, no matter where they are, whether it's a hologram sitting next to you in a physical meeting, or in a discussion taking place in the metaverse, that's going to be a game changer. I think this could be very positive for our society and economy. Giving people access to jobs in more places, no matter where they live, will be a big deal for spreading opportunity to more people. Dropping our daily commutes will mean less time stuck in traffic, and more time doing things that matter. And it'll be good for the environment. We plan to continue to either subsidize our devices or sell them at cost to make them available. Yeah, it's good for the environment. Well, how good is it for the human brain? This human brain, will be, uh, this, this metaverse, I'm assuming that we will have to use VR headsets. And these VR headsets, I don't know, I'm not a professional, but I'm sure they emit radioactive we radio waves that they use to communicate, definitely. And now, Human beings, because I can't do metaverse, that means human beings will have to be on this headset for close to about 5 to 10 hours a day because maybe that's how a lot of people work. I've been exposed to kind of radiations, um, bruh. How, how good is it to the human body? To more people? We'll continue supporting sideloading and linking to PCs so consumers and developers have choice rather than forcing them to use the Quest Store to find apps or reach customers. And we'll aim to offer developer and creator services with low fees in as many cases as possible so we can maximize the overall creator economy while recognizing that to keep investing in this future we'll need to keep some fees higher for some period to make sure that we don't lose too much money on this program overall after so basically it's going to be expensive so what's basically saying now that he's going to create this a very expensive system that people will use that people will have to use because eventually from the way the world is going people will have to use it and I see creating the same kind of hierarchy that not everyone will be able to afford this this will make many people 
homeless, jobless. He just he said he said that okay he said that this is going to be how to be costly for a period of time to make sure so 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 um for all while a growing number of developers are already profitable we expect to invest many billions of dollars for years to come before the metaverse reaches scale today we're introducing the presence platform which is a broad range of machine perception and AI capabilities that empower developers to build uh, mixed reality experiences on Quest 2. Now, you want to tell us more about the Presence platform? Yeah, we've said before that realistic presence is the key to feeling connected in the metaverse. Uh, and the Presence platform's capabilities are what's going to deliver on that promise. Things like environmental understanding, content placement and persistence, voice interaction, standardized hand interactions. In fact, let's start with hands. I mean, the human hand is an engineering marvel. And bringing hands into VR was no easy feat. Uh, it required a lot of collaboration against product, design, research, but we continue to improve that product, finding new ways to navigate with gestures and interact with VR. So today, we're introducing the Interaction SDK, a library of modular components that will make it easy to add hand interactions to your apps. That's pretty exciting. But next year, we are releasing a new product that will push the boundaries of VR even further. We've co-named it Project Cambria. So this isn't the next quest. It's going to be compatible with Quest, but Cambria will be a completely new, advanced, and high-end product, and it'll be at the higher end of the price spectrum, too. Our plan here is to keep building out this pro- Higher end of the price spectrum. Higher end of the price spectrum. Why? <clears throat> yeah, I understand that you have to make profit because I've invested billions of dollars in it, but making things like this and... <laughs> It's just, it's just strange, bro. It's strange. ...product line to release our most advanced technology before we can hit the price points that we target with Quest. All right, so let's talk about some of the new advances here. Yeah, sure. There's a ton of new tech going into Cambria. For example, your avatar will be able to make natural eye contact and reflect your facial expressions in real time. This way, people you're interacting with will have a, a real sense of how you're actually feeling. It does mean building more sensors into a form factor that's comfortable to wear for a while. And because we want VR to be for everyone, we also have to make sure avatars represent a diverse set of human facial features and skin tones, as well as paying attention to things like um, glasses and beers that may get in the way of some of the sensors. So that's going to be a big step forward for social presence. And I'm really glad that we're focused on making it inclusive from the start. Now, what about unlocking more mixed reality experiences? I mean, imagine working at your virtual desk with multiple screens while seeing your real desk so clearly that you can pick up a pen and write notes without taking your headset off. Or you know, you're doing a workout with a virtual instructor in your living room. It's going to be so cool. We're already seeing the potentials of these kinds of experiences today as people are building for a pass-through API. But with Cambria, we'll be taking this to the next level with high-resolution, colored, mixed-reality pass-through. We essentially combine an array of sensors with reconstruction algorithms to represent your physical world in the headset with a sense of depth and perspective. But the ultimate goal here is true augmented reality glasses, and we've been working on that too. And today, I want to show you an experience that we've been working on for Project Nazare which is the codename for our first full augmented reality glasses. Here, you'll see you're chatting with friends on WhatsApp and planning a game night. You can select a game, and then, as you walk over to your kitchen, you can easily just put your game onto the table and you're off. And that's the kind of experience that augmented reality will unlock. There's a lot of technical work to get this form factor and experience right. We have to fit hologram displays, projectors, batteries, radios, custom silicon chips, cameras, speakers, sensors to map the world around you, and more into glasses that are about five millimeters thick. So we still have a ways to go with Nazare, but we are making good progress. So basically, this meant, I honestly, I actually, though I floor this idea a lot of times in this video, but I actually feel like this is amazing because i myself I, I actually like technology for christ's sake i'm studying the, the, the computer software development in need so i actually love i my is someone that i actually look up to and yeah i see he's innovative and come up with ideas and and let's not lie this will we all expected this was expected at some point in the future when you see futuristic movie this is exactly what we see 
So what are, the world you're going to move into a world where everyone has VRS sets and nobody lives realistically. Well, see, now he also spoke of augmented reality, meaning that you can have your VR, but not you're not fully VR. You can have your VR on your table on your bed. That is also quite fascinating and interesting because I feel like that's also very nice. And Mark Zuckerberg is somebody that you see is um, he keeps every time he comes up with new ideas, he keeps his mind blowing every time. So yeah. When I said I actually like it, I actually like it, though I fall it. Actually, I'm optimistic to see what kind of world we are moving into. And I hopefully, if when I graduate, I hope to work with him one day. And Mark, if you see this video, when I graduate, I beg, hire me. It's not too much to ask. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, make sure to like and subscribe and leave your call, leave your opinion on, on your thoughts on this metaverse and virtual reality world we are moving into. And yeah next week.